Hi friends, this is Riddhi Joshi and today I am going to discuss about shoulder joint. So first of all, we are going to see about shoulder anatomy, muscles, ligaments, labrum and bursa. Let's see, the shoulder joint is made up of glenohumeral joint, acromioclavicular joint, scapulothoracic articulation and sternoclavicular joint. So first let's see about the glenohumeral joint. The type of glenohumeral joint is multi-axial joint. The glenohumeral joint is ball and socket type of synovial joint. So we need to see about the osteokinematic and arthrokinematics. Let's see for that. Let's see about the roll and slide in glenohumeral joint. If the flexion is occurring, so the roll will be anteriorly, so like this way, roll will be in anterior direction and it will slide par uh, parallelly, so it, uh, the slide will be in posterior direction. If extension is there, so it will uh, roll posteriorly, if extension is there, so roll posteriorly and slide anteriorly. If horizontal adduction, so rolling anteriorly, sliding posteriorly. If abduction is there, so your hand is moving away. So same way, like extension, the roll will be in posterior direction, roll will be in the posterior direction and your uh, slide will be in anterior direction. Slide will be in anterior direction. In abduction, the roll will be in superior direction and adduction the slide will be in inferior direction this inferior direction if internal rotation is going on so roll will be anteriorly and slide will be posteriorly in external rotation roll will be posteriorly and slide will be anterior let's see how about the arthrokinematic of glenohumeral joint so in arthrokinematics the joints are moving so either it is uh, rolling, sliding or gliding. Let's see in this diagram. This is roll, this is glide and this is spin. So while rolling, the one joint surface is roll on another. This is one joint surface, another joint surface. So it will roll on another. Like some ball is rolling uh, across the ground. If the glide is there, means the moment of joint surface parallel to the plane of adjacent joint surface. Like if we are skating on the ice or uh, sliding on the ice, this is called the glide. Spin. So rotation of a movable joint. The surface on fixed adjacent surface. Means this is a fixed joint and this is rotation of another joint. This is called spin. Let's see the pattern and position of glenohumeral joint. So the resting position is 40 to 55 degree abduction, 30 degree horizontal adduction. Close back position, full abduction and external rotation and the capsular pattern is external rotation, abduction and internal rotation. Let's see about the normal range of motion of shoulder joint. Flexion is 180 degree, extension 60, abduction is 180 degree, internal or medial rotation is 0 to 70, external or lateral rotation is 0 to 90. Let's see acromioclavicular joint. It is a diarthroidal synovial joint. It will be plane joint and triaxial joint. The resting position is arm hang by side Close back position is 90 degree abduction of your arm and the capsular pattern is horizontal adduction and full elevation. The static stabilizers are acromioclavicular ligament and the dynamic stabilizers, there, is, there are no muscle directly across the acromioclavicular joint, so no dynamic stabilizers. Let's see acromioclavicular arthrokinematics. Arthrokinematics means how joints are moving. Here the clavicle is convex and the acromion is concave. During elevation, the 
lateral clavicle this is sternum this is clavicle this is sternum is nearby the medial side and this is lateral side so during elevation the lateral clavicle roll upward and the medial clavicle glide inferior on disc and manubrium during depression the lateral clavicle this is lateral clavicle roll downward and the medial clavicle glide superiorly like this way on the disc and manubrium let's see the orthokinematic motions the medial clavicle is convex and the concave is disc and manubrium so during elevation the lateral clavicle roll upward and medial clavicle glide inferior on the disc and manubrium during depression the lateral clavicle roll downward and the medial clavicle it go upward or superiorly on disc and manubrium if the protraction is occurring the medial clavicle and disc roll and glide anteriorly on manubrium the medial clavicle and disc both glide roll anteriorly on manubrium if retraction exactly opposite medial clavicle and disc roll and glide in posterior on like posterior on manubrium the static stabilizers of uh, sternoclavicular joint are ligaments interclavicular and the costoclavicular ligaments interclavicular ligament and costoclavicular ligaments and dynamic stabilizers here no muscle is crossing so no dynamic stabilizers let's see about the muscle action of shoulder joint so first is flexion we just need to remember ac pb means anterior deltoid cor c means coracobrachialis p means pectoralis major B means biceps brachii. Extension. Just remember L P T means L and S V R P T. Just remember P T. So latissimus dorsi from L. P means posterior deltoid. T means teres major. Abduction. Just remember uh, remember M S surgeon or M S. So middle deltoid and supraspinatus. Abduction. lady between two major means teres major pectoralis major and latissimus dorsi external rotation pit pit so posterior deltoid infraspinatus teres minor internal rotation flat p so subscapularis latissimus dorsi anterior deltoid teres major and pectoralis major let's see about the scapular muscles so scapular elevators are upper trapezius and levator scapuli scapular depressions uh, is done by latissimus dorsi pectoralis major and minor and lower trapezius protraction is done by serratus anterior and pectoralis minor retraction by trapezius and rhomboids upward ro rotation we need to just remember upset trap means upper rota rotation serratus anterior and trapezius downward rotation down rom pelle means downward rotation is done by rhomboids pectoralis minor and levator scapuli let's see about some rotator cuff muscle supraspinatus infraspinatus teres minor and subscapularis are rotator cuff muscles let's see about supraspinatus muscle so what is origin insertion action and nerve supply of it first origin is from supraspinous fossa of scapula it is inserted uh, to the superior aspect of greater tubercle of humerus here we can see that the main action is abduction abduction of your arm suprascapular nerve is the nerve supply of supraspinatus muscle Let's see about the infraspinatus muscle. The origin of infraspinatus muscle is infraspinous fossa of scapula. It is inserted to the middle part of 
greater tubercle of humerus. <coughs> the main action is external rotation of your arm. So it will externally rotate of your arm and it is supplied by suprascapular nerve. Let's see about subscapularis muscle. The origin of uh, subscapularis muscle is subscapular fossa of scapula. It is inserted to the laser tubercular of humerus. It is only the muscle which is uh, inserted to the uh, laser tubercular of humerus. The main action is internal rotation of your arm. It is supplied by upper and lower subscapular nerve. Let's see about the teres minor muscle. The origin of teres minor muscle is middle part of lateral border of scapula. This is middle part and the lateral border of scapula. It is inserted to the inferior as aspect of greater tubercle of humerus. Here we can see that inferior aspect of greater tubercle of humerus. Main action is external rotation and adduction of your arm. It is supplied by axillary nerve. Let's see about five muscle which is primarily responsible for moving the scapula. They are trapezius, levator scapulae, rhomboids, serratus anterior and pectoralis minor. First we are going to see about the upper trapezius muscle. This is upper trapezius muscle. It is originate from the occiput nickel ligament on the cervical vertebra and the uh, insertion of this uh, upper trapezius muscle is later third of clavicle and acromion. Later third of clavicle and acromion. The main action of upper trapezius is scapular elevation, upward rotation and retraction. The innervation is spinal accessory nerve. Let's see about the middle trapezius muscle. This is middle trapezius muscle. It is originated from the spinous process of C7 to T5 means cervical 7 vertebra to T5 and it is inserted to the medial aspect of acromion process and along the scapular spine. This is the medial aspect of uh, acromion and uh, along the process of scapular, this is scapular spine. Main action is scapular retraction. It is supplied by spinal accessory nerve. This is the lower trapezius muscle. It is originated from T6 vertebra to T12. It is inserted to the base of spine of scapula. This is base of spine of scapula. The action is depression and downward rotation plus retraction of the scapula. This is like here we can see this depression, downward rotation and retraction. It is supplied by the spinal accessory nerve. Let's see about the levator scapulae muscle. This is levator scapulae muscle. It is originated from the transverse process of C1 to C4 vertebra means cervical first to 4 vertebra. It is inserted to the vertebral border of scapula and superior angle and base of spine. The main action is elevation and downward rotation of scapula. Elevation and downward rotation of scapula. It is supplied by dorsal scapular nerve. Let's see about the rhomboid major and rhomboid minor muscle. This is blue one is minor and this is major muscle. So it is originated from the nuclear ligament. The um, uh, rhomboid minor is originated from C7 to T1. And the major muscle, rhomboid major, it is originated from the spinous process of T2 vertebra to T5 vertebra. It is inserted to the vertebral border of scapula from base of the scapular spine to inferior angle of scapula. Base of spine to inferior angle of scapula. Main action is scapular retraction, elevation and downward rotation. It is again supplied by dorsal scapular nerve. 
let's see about serratus anterior muscle it is originated from external surface of lateral first nine rib this is external surface of lateral first nine rib the main insertion of a serratus anterior muscle is vertebral border of scapula near the inferior angle the action is protraction and upward rotation of scapula it is supplied by long thoracic nerve let's see about the pectoralis minor muscle this is pectoralis minus minor muscle it is originated from anterior aspect of third to fifth rib and insertion is coracoid process of scapula main action is depression and downward rotation of scapula it is supplied by medial pectoral nerve let's see about pectoralis major muscle it has clavicular head and sternal head the clavicular head it is originated from anterior surface of medial half of clavicle and the sternal head anterior surface of sternum first superior six costal cartilages and it is inserted to the lateral lip of intertubercular groove of the humerus main action is adduction of your arm and medially rotates the humerus means internal rotation and adduction it is supplied by lateral and medial pectoral nerve let's see about the deltoid muscle deltoid ha has anterior deltoid middle deltoid and posterior deltoid so anterior deltoid is originated from anterior surface of lateral clavicle middle deltoid acromion process of uh, acromion process and spine of scapula and the posterior uh, deltoid it is originated from spine of scapula the main insertion of anterior and middle deltoid is near the deltoid tuberosity of humerus and the posterior deltoid to, to, to the deltoid tuberosity of humerus it is supplied by axillary nerve the action of anterior deltoid is flexion at shoulder joint and medial rotation of your arm the uh, middle deltoid will help for abduction of the shoulder and the posterior deltoid is help for extension and external rotation of your arm the force couple so what is force couple the force couple is muscle pulling in different direction to accomplish the same action is called force couple it is most important for the shoulder action, uh, muscle action if it is not working properly it may harm your shoulder joint so let's see the force couple of your shoulder joint so upward rotation of the scapula the upward rotation of scapula is done by upper trapezius this is the upper trapezius which pulls up lower trapezius which pulls down and serratus anterior this is serratus anterior which is pull outward downward rotation of the scapula it's done by pectoralis minor muscle which is pulling down rhomboid muscle which pull in and levator scapulae which pulls up let's see some important ligaments of your shoulder joint so ligaments are soft tissue and structures that connect bones to bone so first is glenohumeral ligament so glenohumeral has superior glenohumeral ligament middle glenohumeral ligament and inferior glenohumeral ligament second is coracoacromial ligament so this is coracoacromial ligament this ligament links the coracoid to acromion this ligament links to coracoid to acromion if it is thicken and if it is not working properly so there will be impingement syndrome let's see about the transverse humeral ligament this is tiny transverse humeral ligament 
it holds the tendon of long head of biceps brachii muscle in the groove between greater and the lesser tubercular on the humerus so if your biceps is having some problem so at that time if it is getting torn off so your transverse ligament will come out let's see about the coracoclavicular ligaments so this is a coracoacromial ligament coracohumeral ligament and now we are going to see about the coracoclavicular ligament there are two ligament trapezoid and conoid ligament collectively it's known as known as coracoclavicular ligament it attaches to the clavicle and coracoid process of scapula these two small ligaments with the acromioclavicular joint it's play important role to keep the scapula attached to the clavicle and it helps to keeping your shoulder square that's why they carry massive load and extremely strong if the patient is falling on their point of shoulder and rupture of this ligament it may lead to the dislocation of acromioclavicular joint so that's why these ligaments are very important let's see about the superior glenohumeral ligament middle and the inferior glenohumeral ligament if uh, extension abduction and external rotation is there so superior glenohumeral ligament get under some tension if flexion and external rotation is occur so middle glenohumeral ligament go under the tension if abduction extension and external rotation occur so inferior glenohumeral ligament come under the tension so let's see at 0 degree abduction subscapularis muscle labrum and the superior glenohumeral ligaments are primarily restrains against the anterior translation of your shoulder that means the subscapularis muscle and the superior glenohumeral ligaments they are working good so they are primarily restrains your anterior translation of the humerus at the 0 to 45 degree abduction subscapularis and middle glenohumeral ligaments along with the labrum prevents the anterior translation and if the greater than 90 degree abduction is there this is the most common position for anterior dislocation of your shoulder so anterior fiber of inferior glenohumeral ligaments are primarily restraints for anterior translation and they prevent the anterior dislocation at that time so that's why the 0 to 0 uh, degree then 0 to 45 degree and greater than 90 degree abduction this all three ligaments are very important let's see about the shoulder bursa so what is bursa it's a fluid like sac and function is to decrease the friction between two surfaces that move in different directions this is subacromial bursa subdeltoid bursa and subcoracoid bursa the subdeltoid and subcoracoid bursa are collectively referred as subacromial bursa this one subacromial bursa so which one are collectively known as subacromial bursa subdeltoid and subacromial are known as subacromial bursa because they are continuous in nature the subacromial bursa is one of the largest bursa in the body and it provides a two smooth serous layer one of which adheres to the overlying deltoid muscle and other is to the rotator cuff lying in beneath the bursa is also connected to the acromion greater tuberosity coracoacromial ligament as the humerus elevates it permits the rotator cuff to slide easily beneath the deltoid muscle next is subcoracoid bursa this is subcoracoid bursa this one it is located under the coracoid process subscapular bursa this is located between subscapularis muscle tendon and the anterior neck of scapula 
and it protects the tendon as it passes under the coracoid process. Thanks for watching and for future videos don't forget to subscribe. If you have any doubts related to topics in physical therapy exams please let me know in my comment section so I can make a series of the videos on that. Till that time stay positive. Bye bye.